going on guys sergeant's tech tips welcome to another video on my channel now in today's video we're going to be taking apart a dell inspiron n5050 we're going to be installing this 500 gigabyte solid state uh, if you guys want to follow this as a tutorial you are more than welcome to this is a teardown video all you need is a phillips head screwdriver um you might need more bits so just keep more bits on standby i've got plenty so let's go ahead and start getting this apart by removing all of these screws the solid state is going to stay there because there's a product key I'm trying to protect. I don't want you guys trying to steal it because I know how the internet can be. But we're going to go ahead and remove all these screws. Now, keep in mind that these screws can be different sizes depending on the manufacturer. Uh, most of the time, they're usually the same size and it looks like this one's going to be. But if they are different sizes, the best bet... I lied. Okay, they are not different, the same size. So this screw is much smaller. If I uh, take another one, it's actually thicker too. This screw is much smaller than that one. So you need to keep these separate. That way you don't lose them. And you can usually tell where they go by the threads. If the threads are a lot thicker, they're going to fit right in the thicker threads. So I'm just going to leave this farther away. I'm not really sure why manufacturers use two different screws. I think it's to like throw the customer off so that if you're trying to take it apart like you're doing now, following along, is so you can't continue doing that. They want you to bring the computer to them so they can fix it. Even though this laptop's old enough to the point where the warranty is more than likely expired. I'm not really sure why companies do this. Uh, usually there's screws under here and it looks like there is so just make sure to check sometimes there's screws under a battery cover so now to get this apart it's going to be a little bit of a challenge because i got to cover up this so i haven't taken one of these apart in a very very long time so bear with me here but to get these apart it's usually just clips which that looks like it's still the case all you got to do is find your spudger you can't can't really see it i always do this find your spudger and then you're going to want to go into the parts and find them this is actually just a cover but i'm gonna take it off anyway because it might have screws under it which all you got to do is do that and then just pull up carefully because these clips are very fragile but they do that on purpose just like that so and there's no screws under here but that can also stay out yeah the keyboard needs to come out that's why i don't like these laptops because they don't make it easy to get into but you're gonna need another plastic spudger something presumably smaller than the one you were just using uh, you can also use a screwdriver like a flathead for this part i don't recommend it because it can damage the keyboard but all you gotta do is press down and then like angle it so the keyboard comes up or sorry press in that way the clip gets moved out of the way and then pull up so you're gonna want to press in pull up you can use the side that you pulled up already as an advantage and then just hold up one side and push in the clips and they should just pop right out just like that and then you're gonna pull up and then now there's a ribbon cable for the keyboard all you got to do for the ribbon cable is pull up the tab use your spudger or screwdriver just be careful with the metal screwdriver because you can break the tab and pull the ribbon cable out and then you're good now it looks like you can actually access the ram from here so if you are following this by tutorial if you're following this and you want to install your ram your ram's right here so you don't actually have to take all the screws out of the bottom if you did you could easily put them back it won't take you very long there isn't actually any screws down here there's only two from what i see which is good because this will make our life much easier and for the disk drive the screw is actually down in here so you will have to take that out because there might be screws under the disk drive always keep the screw for the disk drive with the disk drive that way you don't lose it pull out the disk drive just literally pull it out what i usually do is i put the screw on top of the disk drive and then put the disk drive off to the side use the spudger tool to your advantage and pull up so the clips get removed and then you can just keep pulling then you can go around the chassis uh, just make sure to not lose it because they will clip back together ask me how i know go down and then you're going to want to lay it flat just keep in mind that you don't want to lose any of those Honestly, it looks like the top panel is just going to come off, if I'm not mistaken, which means... Oh, okay. Now, these these ribbon cables, um, they're kind of a pain. Uh, just use your spudger tool or whatever to pull up on them because it's like a weird locking mechanism. I don't know why that exists, but it does. And um, then you should be able to just pull this out. Uh, make sure to check for other ribbon cables because there's usually more. There's one here on the left side of the laptop, which is probably the power button. That was exactly correct. It was this ribbon cable for the power button. But now you got the top panel off and we have access to the drive. Let's go ahead and remove the drive. And to do so, oh, so it looks like the screws in the bottom panel right here. That's why there's four here. It holds in the, oh, probably want to see, huh? For the screws in the bottom panel, the four here, that's why there's four. It's for the drive, which is smart. It's not necessarily a dumb idea because now all we have to do to remove the drive is to slide and pull up. And then all you got to do is keep it. I'd keep the drive, obviously, because you could probably still use it for storage, depending on how old it is. So now all you got to do is reverse the process and put it back together. So all you got to do is slide this under the display, push down, let it clip in, push in the cables back, pull up to make sure the cable's in there, because sometimes it'll come out when you're trying to put it back together. I've had that happen multiple times. You're going to want to clip the casing back together. It's all clipped back together. You can put those two screws back in, ribbon cable in. Now, just make sure that the contacts, um, if you actually see, it says up. So I was actually going to put it in wrong i believe i think we want to put it in this way essentially because it's going to tell you not all these cables tell you but it's going to tell you which way it wants to be and you should be good 
And then to get the keyboard back in, you just slide it in on the rear and push down all corners so that the clips reconnect to the keyboard. But that's how you do that. Yeah, one thing I'm noticing here, guys, is that since it's a solid state, it's not as heavy. You may have to flip the laptop upside down to get the screws in. I just used a spudger, uh, pushed it in the hole and kind of angled it and pulled up. That way it, uh, the screw will go in properly. Alrighty guys, that is how you take apart a Dell Inspiron N5050. If you guys enjoyed this video, please drop a like. If you guys did not enjoy this video, please drop a dislike. Definitely like it if it helped you guys out because I know these laptops can be pretty common, especially if you just don't want to buy a new laptop and your laptop works fine. So you can install solid state and bring some new life into it. If you guys want to see more videos like this, let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see y'all in the next video and peace out.